YouTube, we are in the top 16 of the new pack day. The new pack day, if I could remember off the top of my head, is Monadium, Super Heavy Samurai, Nemrulia, Gold Pride, Dinosaurs, and Dino Morphe. I don't think I forgot anything. That's six new decks and or newly supported decks in today's event. Are all of them there? Probably not, but as you can see right here, Monadium versus Monadium, huge support for Monadium came out today. And with that said, Hajime. There can only be one winner, and you're looking at it. Let's go. Starting off with the Scarecrow, Scareclaw Field Searcher, which will be grabbing our Vsauce Starfrost. We're now gonna be grabbing any Monadium card, Monadium monster that is from the deck. The Rhymeheart can search for any Monadium card. So it's Monadium monster into Monadium card. We are going to be using our Maxi before any potential special summoning happens here. We're gonna use the Reimaginings. The Monadium Imaginings will reveal a Monadium card to then draw to, then return a card back in the deck. So. We do not want them to get that draw to play. Ash is going to negate, and then we're passing. Now, did the Maxi actually do anything? Starfrost is an activated effect on the hand, which could chain Maxi, and Starfrost actually can't target the Rhymeheart to destroy it. It has to be a different type and attribute. This is a warrior, and it's light, so Starfrost would not have even worked here. So that Maxi was early. What the heck was that? Let's go. Imagining versus imagining. I negated yours. You are not negating mine. You are responding with Maxi, and we are going to finger the C, negate. You will not stop me from special summoning, except you just have an impermanence. Can imperm keep Monadium in check? Probably not. We have Droplet, which could dodge the impermanence, potentially. Returning the Scareclaw Cashier back of the deck. We have Cashier Fenrir to then return it back into our hand, and this is where we could chain Droplet. Do we though? Monadium Rhymeheart activating the search for Monadium card. And as I said, drop the lit, dodge the impermanence, negate the Rhymeheart to then dodge the negation on our own Rhymeheart, which will be giving us our Abscission. Abscission could pop a monster we control uh, to search our deck for the field spell. Field spell could search for a Vsauce Starfrost or a Monadium monster and uh, we, we're done, we're done. Our Imperm did not keep the deck in check. We're moving on to game two. Starting off with a Fenrir Special Summon, which we did not maxi preemptively in the draw phase to play around. And now if we maxi now, we are potentially playing into a TTT that is not actually here. Now there is a draw on Lockbird, which turns off your own maxi. So maybe we just want to droll them. And we're playing into droll right now with the Obsidian, popping the ball to summon a ball to search for a card to then get drolled. Let's see what that does. So this searches, so the draw will stop it, right? Chain draw to the Meek summoning from the deck. And just like that, no more adding. We cannot add with the Star Frost into the Light Heart. We cannot add with the Field Spell searching for a Monadium monster. Droll stocks are up. You want to play Droll and Lockbird to beat Super Heavy Samurai and beat Monadium. We have Field Spell grabbing the Rhyme Heart, summoning the Right Heart, which if you were to Imperm, the Rhyme Heart would chain pop it. And that's... <laughs> Early, early surrender. Okay, uh, two, <laughs> let's go. Did not shift her in the draw phase, we're waiting. Now, Droll and Lockbird states that you have to send this card from the hand to the grave. So what you could do is as soon as you do something that would allow us to activate the Droll and Lockbird, you could activate Shifter, then chain Droll and Lockbird to your Shifter. All new cards that would go to the graveyard will be banished and you cannot add cards in the deck to the hand. So that's exactly what I believe we're doing. Ovi Raptor add. It, does Miscellaneous need to go to the grave? Yes, it does. So Shifter will stop it from going to the grave, but you could chain to the Shifter as you try to put it in the grave. Let's see what we do. Exactly, it's like I pre-watched this, right? Gonna chain the miscellaneous to the shifter, but we're gonna chain Droll and Lockbird so you don't further add cards from the deck to the hand. Very well done. So miscellaneous into searching for the pill that we already have in the hand is not possible, but we already have the pill. Arcosar could not get searching, so no pop, does not pop the petite, and then we're just ending our turn. The pill requires us to have a dino and non-dino in the graveyard, or in the hand, hand or grave to banish to summon our ultimate conductor Tyranno, which the shifter stopped. So very well done. Uh, what the heck is this? Brick Tira, huh? Okay, that's sad. 
Sprite Elf is here, ready to reborn our Max C from the graveyard. Okay, we're gonna banish from the hand and grave a Dino and non-Dino to summon that ultimate conductor Tyranno, untargetable from the impermanence, with the effect to flip the whole field face down non-targeting. So that's pretty good, can also attack everybody on the field. Not quite lethal damage, we're gonna have to take this into the next turn. Now, not only could we flip the field face down by popping the Petite, but Petite could also summon the the uh, the pancratops which could pop any card in the field so that's double disruption off of one ultimate conductor tyranno what the heck maxi droll droll imperm theosis which could just be teched into your deck maybe you're not playing cash tira i don't know what you're playing let's go maxi preemptively ash negates now with the pressure planet we have Unicorn, Theosis, uh, Fenrir, Riseheart. Are we gonna summon the uh, Riseheart to ensure every card is banished? Miscellaneous before the Cash Tier is on the field so we don't get to look at their extra deck and banish a card. That did make sense there. Theosis seeing our Fenrir, and let's speed this up. And okay, I guess it, it is Cash Tier. Cash Tier is here. Shangri, trigger the Shangri. Bang the Shang Ri to summon the Fen Rear back onto the field here. And then we also have a Rise Heart. A Rise Heart against a Dino deck is going to be quite beneficial for the Cash Tier player. And we also, because we made a Shang Ri, it's got the three material to quick effect banish any card in the field face down. So we have Banish, everything gets banished, and let's see what we can do. Shang reactivating, summoning the Unicorn so we could look at the opponent's extra deck if they activate a monster effect. We are fossil digging for our OV Raptor. We cannot use miscellaneous to make our OV Raptor unaffected from the Arise Heart Banish. We have Kaiju. We have to do something right here, right now, before the Kaiju tributes over the Arise Heart. Unicorn's gonna look at the extra deck. Toggle on. Yes. Yes. Chain. What are we doing? We're locking up in another zone. Are we banishing before we get Kaiju'd? Yes. Detach three, banish the OV Raptor, cannot use miscellaneous source here. We're gonna suck up another card. Now, whatever we suck up is going to go to the graveyard. And because we detached the Arise Heart before it got Kaiju'd and it's on the field, ensuring every card is banished when sent to the grave, that will trigger the Big Bang again to grab the Fenrir and summon it onto the field. This is great. Even with the Kaiju, which now may just tribute over the Fenrir instead, you're, we're gonna have to deal with the Arise Heart. What do we do? We got rid of the Arise Heart, so we have to deal with that Fenrir, but now our dinosaurs are unaffected from Fenrir. We're gonna chain Maxi to the effect of the miscellaneous to summon and pop the Petite from the hand. This is not looking too good for dinos, I think. Having to deal with that Maxi, pop the Petite. We can't imperm it because the miscellaneous Petite come forth and summon OV Raptor. Our zones are locked up to the point where this is actually gonna be disrupting the plays we can make. Banishing a Dino and non-Dino for the newly drawn Ash to negate. Turning this into a scoop. Brick Tira game one actually taken game two. Let's do this. All right, we have Shifter in the draw phase, but Call to the Grave to eat the Shifter. Shifter will eat the Called By, but then we could follow up Max C. We're actually not gonna draw phase, we're gonna wait. Ooh, we hoped that Dinos would Brick. And they did. <laughs> what the heck is this? Didn't even have to shift or maxi on their turn. Now, we don't want that shifter to continually be banishing our cards, including the next turn. So we do have to finger the shifter now, making us susceptible to maxi, which is not activatable after a shifter is resolved. If upstart goblin in our deck, what the heck is this? Are we playing a 37 card deck or what? Rise Heart Special Summoning because we have the Fenrir locking us into Xyz only, banishing an Ogre and three cards off the opponent's deck face down. We have Ground Xeno banished, but we're not going to even see it be used, unfortunately, as the Birth will be birthing back onto the field our Fenrir. Now to battle we go. We cannot banish that Rex face down, but on the attack, we are looking at the extra deck, banishing the limited to one Zeus. This is where Zeus being unlimited in TCG was to great benefit as you would just, everyone would play too because of Unicorn. Max C early to play around the triple tactics talent, fossil digging our miscellaneous source to our hand. Now, what exactly does this card do? 
if a card is destroyed, any card, you could special summon this card from the hand, and then you could destroy a dinosaur in your hand or field to special summon a normal dino from your hand or deck. So this is another way to pop the baby. Let's go. Unicorn looking at the extra deck, taking out the Pentastag. Miscellaneous summoning the Archosaur to pop the baby. And then I guess Droll will be used here, right? Stop them. But if we Droll, we stop our Maxi also. So maybe we actually don't even want to do that. Triggering the Meteorus after the baby has been popped to come forth and summon. Baby Source summoning the OV Raptor, activating to search our deck. Are we going to be popping with the Meteors? No, we're just using it to then synchro into a Baron de Floor. How do we do that? It's a level six tuner. What? Okay. Baron de Floor popping the Fenrir. We're finally seeing some new dinosaur plays with the brand new support here. Banishing Giant Rex and our Psyframe Driver to summon our ultimate conductor Tyranno. Can we perform lethal damage? Birth is going to be triggered after a spell effect has been used to banish three cards from the opponent's graveyard face down. We're going to attempt to summon the Scareclaw Kestera, which the Baron to floor will be negating. What do we have here? We have 8,300 damage in the field. We already activated Baron to floor to pop, so we do not have game. We need more damage. Giant Rex cannot attack directly. We're now making a Dugaris to double the attack of the Ultimate Conductor Tyranno, potentially. 7,000 attack, dealing 4,500 on that attack. 1,200, 3K, lethal damage. Dinosaurs are advancing to the top eight. Let's go. Cash Tira, I have nothing against you. I root for the deck, not the player. You are a great player, but we need dinosaurs to move on. Damn. That is something. Pendulum versus Makonko in the top 16. And it's worth noting that this is when the players are in the top 16, not the deck. So if you think you could recreate the decks from either player here, you could if you take notes and with a lot of practice, but otherwise it's, the, it's all them. It's all them. What did I say? We are Baguska-ing. Baguska, what the heck is that? That's the floodgate. If you have no set card in the field, your monsters cannot attack or activate their effects. So that's a problem. And, but then if you then set a card in the field, we could pendulum graph it off the field. Uh, damn, okay, let's go. Uh-huh, you have to have set cards in the spell and trap zones. We have none. We can't activate anything on the field, that is. Unless we set the ceremony, which then will get popped. We didn't set the ceremony. <laughs> what are we what are we doing? We can't we can't do anything. We can't activate on the fields. Ceremony sending from the decks of the grave, the I we just realized like, oh, that thing floodgates us, and I actually can't do anything. Alright. Maxi versus Maxi, what do we do here? We are not a normal Makanko deck. We are chain, uh, triggering the effect to search for an equip card. We can then use the water to return our monster back to our hand, a special summon from the deck, our Hugh Lee, and we're doing it all under Max C. Where do we stop? I mean, I feel like that could have potentially been a good stop. The Hugh Lee can't be targeted, can't be destroyed. Herald of Arclight, going a little bit further for our negates. We have the Fire Dance to reborn the Hugh Lee. And how many cards will be in their hand here? They have eight cards to dismantle the field of what does this do? The arc light ensures that any monster sent from the hand or deck will be banished instead, plus it can negate anything. So one disruption. The Hue Lake cannot be destroyed by battle, card effect, or be targeted, nor can the fire dance be targeted. And then we have the rivalry, which could negate or take control of a monster. Essentially, we just have double disruption plus maxi. Skull Crobat gets searching for our Performa Pal, setting up our Pendulum Scale Iris. We are going to pop ourselves to search our deck for a Star Pendulum Graph. Star Pendulum Graph will make it so your Spellcaster monsters cannot be targeted by spell cards or effects. Now we're going to use the Herald of Arc Light to negate the Black Fang Magician Pendulum Scale. A high scale eight. Does that work out? Do we have any more high scales in our hand? Scale two, harmonizing is a scale eight. Perform pal, scale two. Black Fang is actually, when destroyed, gonna reborn itself. I, I don't think I've ever seen that before. 
negate Black Fang, Black Fang Reborn itself. Okay, wow, that is interesting. That actually just came up. Electromite is here to put a monster into the extra deck. We could then pop our purple poison to pop a card in the field. But we're going to negate all that. Negate the Electromite, which can't be targeted by spells, but we're targeting it with the trap to equip it with the spell to negate it with the Axe of Fools. Negate. So even though you can't be targeted, you're, you know, you're not being targeted. You're, you're being affected by the continuous effect of being targeted by another card. Big Pendulum Summon into the Harmonizing. The Perform Pal is also a scale 6, so that worked out. Harmonizing with no chain link block to stop it from summoning a level 6 from the deck to make a bear into floor. As we now make an Ignister Prominence. Isn't this non-targeting? You could shuffle one card in the field into the deck without targeting it, thus the Huey is screwed. Yup. Goodbye. <laughs> Damn. And higher chain link purple poison could have popped the Axe of Fools if we wanted to so that the Electromite would not be negated, but that's okay. Now, the Axe of Fools is not stopping it from attacking. We are we just thank them for the boost. Thank you for the plus 1,000. 8850 on the field. I think this is a quick 2-0 victory for Pendulum. Pop in our own odd eyes, and to game we go. Why pop the Axe of Fools when it's giving us game? Lethal damage. Gee, are you eating Totinos right now? I, I'm smelling food, what the heck? 2-0. Very nice. Deity Crow and Ash. Now, Super Heavy Samurai can't play spell traps in their deck. They're restricted to just monsters. Right away, shotgunning the Branded Fusion, eating the Ash. Woo! We made some plays. Now, Cartesia could fuse Triggering Quem to Reborn and Albast in the Graveyard to fuse at the opponent's fields. The Red could fuse into Chimera to get Poppin, or it could go into a Mirror Jade to banish. And if we wait to summon Mirror Jade to banish, then fuse with the Mirror Jade, we could Reborn the Mirror Jade with the Quem to banish twice. Let's go. Mirror Jade and Alibur or Kit can make a, I'm, I'm sorry, I gotta talk about this. It can make Dragostapelia, we can banish with Mirror Jade, we can banish with Mirror Jade, we can negate with Mercurier. We have about four disruptions with this against the brand new Super Heavy Samurai. Let's go. Wagon is one of the worst ways to open up with Super Heavy Samurai, but it's still very good. We are going to Cartesia Fuse right here, right now, and being responded to with a Max C, making the Albion. This could trigger the Quem to Reborn from the Graveyard. Albion is going to Fusion Summon into our Mirror Jade. Ready with the non-target Monster Banish. Now, this only searches if it goes into attack position. So we could have banished it to stop it from searching if we wanted to. Grabbing a Soul Piercer. We are going to be using the Wagon, the booster that is Booster and Wagon. Whoa! Exiton Knight! This states that only if your opponent controls more cards than you do you get to wipe out the entire field. We do have a negate, but it's once per chain, so we could try it again, but not within the same chain. So we have to negate and then get rid of it. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, versus one, two, three, four, five, six. So we could do it, and we're doing it. We are doing it. We are negating. Thankfully, we had that negate. Had we not had that negate, we would have lost not our Mirror Jade, because we have Branded Opening in the Grave. So we actually would have been protected from that. We would have lost everything else. Deity Crow, Chain... Bro, what? You didn't Chain Remove it to negating it? It's not negated for the whole turn. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we're losing everything. And what? why did we Chain to our Deity Crow, though? So it's going to now... <laughs> The branded opening is going to protect Mirror Jade, and then Deity Crow did nothing. Huh? We did that out of order. Okay. Branded in, and whatever we summon here is going to be protected by the opening that we tried to banish with Deity Crow. We did it backwards. This is what happened. We got so excited to uh, actually resolve our Exiton Knight, which should not have happened. So we uh, shotgunned the Deity Crow. <laughs> Protecting from destruction here, as I said. Oh my gosh. Motorbike searching for our Wakashi. We already used up our normal summon, but we don't care. 
Wakashi is going to be summoning itself onto the field. No Maxi to keep this in check. We're going to be grabbing the Soul Horns, which will be able to special summon itself onto the field. Now linking this off into our Scarecrow. Scarecrow has to summon the monster to where it's pointing to. I talk about this because if you chain remove it off the field, if you chain banish it, oh, he could not use Exiton because Deity Crow, was, he had too many cards uh, between his field and his hand. You do have to have less cards than the opponent in order to use your Exiton Knight. So I, I get, he just couldn't even activate it. He had to DD Crow to even activate the Exiton Knight. So Scar did not make the mistake, but I do believe we made a mistake by not banishing the Exiton Knight before it was able to activate on a new chain. But anyway, if you chain Ogre or chain banish the Scarecrow in response to its activation, they don't reborn from the graveyard. So this could be a good disruption. Discard, reborn from the grave. Uh, generally, we do, we reborn a uh, Piercer. We are now making the Excel Stardust Synchro, triggering the Piercer to search our deck. Stardust Excel is going to be reborning a monster from the graveyard. And now we're going to be able to full Pendulum Summon. We got the scales. We have scale eight to scale one. And we could Baron to Floor before we commit to our Pendulum Summon. Just like that, Baron to Floor ready to negate. But what are we even negating? There's nothing to negate, really. Now, this is where you Ash. A lot of people are Ashing incorrectly. You negate the Peacemaker, tributing this as a cost. It still leaves the field, then they don't get to summon from the deck. This is a really good use of the Ash. Summoning scales to reborn the Piercer, and that's going to be making... Oh my gosh, he's playing the Ballista. This is all in. <laughs> this is the full power of Super Heavy Samurai is here. We're going all in through multiple disruptions as if they weren't even there. Gearbox being added, Wakashi being added, Gearbox when added triggered to add a Tunneler. We haven't even Pendulum summoned yet because now we make Clifford Genius. Now Clifford Genius can negate any face-up card on the field. Floodgate, it doesn't matter. It's unaffected from spell and trap cards. If you summon two monsters to where it's pointing to, it now searches the deck for any level five or higher machine, which could be a Kaiju or a Therion for Omni Negate. Equipped from the graveyard, a Piercer, which is not a hard once per turn. We could pop it with Baron to Floor if we had not used the effect to pop a card already. And now we're making Abyss Dweller, which could turn off the Mirror Jade from wiping the field. And the Alibur could not reborn from the graveyard. And the Albion could not activate during the end phase to grab a Branded Spell or Trap. Nightmare Unicorn on summon has no card to discard. We're just linking this up into Access Code Talker. Wipe out the entire field, no Alibur, no activate to wipe, and that is gonna be 11,000 damage for lethal. It's game. <laughs> Damn. We could not have... Why are we taking no battle damage? what I forget? Exiton Knight! <laughs> Exiton Knight! We made Axis Code Talker! But Exiton Knight says you take no battle damage. Your opponent takes no damage this turn. Ain't no way. Oh gosh. Well, good thing we dwellered. I mean, can we even play through double negate? Double negate, yeah. If someone Albaz it gets negated, it does not matter. Oh my Jesus. Let's hop into game number two. That whole Exiton situation was just crazy in its own right. Needing to DD Crow early. I Okay, so I still, uh, you had to... You had a DD Crow, let it resolve, then activate Exiton. But like he felt lucky that he could even Exiton to begin with. It, it was a mistake because you should have waited for Mirror Jade to activate, right? DD Crow, don't Exiton. If they chain Mirror Jade, then you Exiton, right? And then after it resolves, then you Exiton, wipe the field. But does it matter? We won anyway. All right, let's go. Damn. Gamma Droll. We are gonna Gamma right away, negate and destroy the Alibur. It That takes up our normal summon. So Quem in the hand, no good. What are you gonna do with Quem in the hand? Lubellion searching for a Bistial. We have the Magna Hut. Draw and Lockbird so the Magna Hut cannot add a Drew Swarm during the end phase. We're gonna be holding on to the Magna Hut to banish a Light or Dark from either player's grave. Now it's Super Polymerization. Do we even play Garura? I know that's a weird question, but some people don't. We have Moo Dragon and Garura. So without looking into what they really do, all you need to know is that 
if they have double attribute of the same on the field, you could fuse with it. Now, we were able to droll ourselves. Droll and Lockbird is a hard counter to Super Heavy Samurai. Shutting down the whole turn. Very nice. So what was the play if we didn't get drolled? The Piercer could equip, then you make the Scarecrow, that triggers the Piercer, and then you pop off from there. Magna Hut is going to recycle the Lubellion in the Grave back to our hand. Hand or it could be Grave or Deck we add. Lubellion searching, do we get drolled again? Get drolled again, we can't Nadir Servant. No Nadir Servant now. Quem sending a Retribution which could add from the Graveyard. And the Magna Hut can actually add under Droll, just not from the deck. It could add from the grave. We had Branded Lost. We are now using the Serenir. DD Crow to banish the Magna Hut to stop the Serenir summon. You are not going to beat me down. And we are only going to have Super Polymerization against Super Heavy Sam. So we avoid two monsters with the same attribute. How's that going to work out? And we're also going to be making a Mirror Jade. Because we couldn't even use the Nadir Servant, we didn't lock ourselves out of the extra deck, thus making this a legal play. Very well done. And uh, we can add from the graveyard with Nadir Servant, thus we still get the effect of Albion, which doesn't have to add from the deck to the hand, which we can't do under Droll. We could set it onto the field instead, fully playing under Droll and Lockbird as if it wasn't even activated. What the heck is going on? Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, we got some disruption. I don't think Super Heavy Samurai is going to very easily dethrone Brain of Despia from being the best deck. Soul Piercer wants to go to the grave, so we banish it. And not only did we banish it, but we turned the Mirror Jade into double disruption by sending a Rinbrum. Rinbrum can't reborn itself here, but it can reborn the Albaz to fuse with the opponent's fields. So if they make Scarecrow, they discard with Scarecrow to reborn from the graveyard, you then uh, you don't want to wait for that to happen. You want to summon the Albaz before they discard to then fuse with their monster. Discarding motorbike, grabbing the Wakashi. Wakushi or Wakashi? What do you want me to call it? Equipping the Wakushi. Uh, fusing with the dark Wakushi. <laughs> okay. It just like that, that would also trigger the Brandon Lost to grab a Mercurier to give an additional monster negate. We also have the Branded in Red, which could turn into a Dragostapelia for a monster negate, or we could go into a Chimera for double poppage. Yeah, you know, hey, we're both drilling each other. This stuff's happening. Stuff is happening. Let's go. Motorbike. Uh, when do you ash? You ash the peacemaker. That is usually when you ash. Come forth. And now there is a risk that they can make Baron to floor before they use the peacemaker. That is a potential issue here. But we just hit him with the droll. Droll him up. No more adding from the deck to the hand. Special summon, this will be our our play. That's the Baron to Floor play right there. Reborn from the graveyard, equip into our back or our pendulum scale. You may have drolled me, but you didn't max see me. So we're gonna keep on special summoning. Shokan into our Omni negates. We are going to be Piercer into Scarecrow. We can't add with the Piercer. Get discard to Reborn from the graveyard our Piercer, which would then be able to trigger its effect again. This is a great opportunity to Ash, had there not been a Baron to Floor to negate the Ash. Negate! If we play Borlode Savage Dragon, this is Baron to Floor and Borlode under Droll. Now, I did say Droll shuts down the deck, but uh, you know, it, it does the best it could do. Making a Baguska! I would say a lot of people are not even playing Borlode Savage Dragon. All right. How do we play around Baguska? All our monsters go to defense. It's worth noting that Branded really doesn't have an inherent out to Baguska outside of the Branded King trap, which not everyone is playing. So how do we stop this? Albaz can't fuse with it. <laughs> We're just setting. Albion setting a Branded opening. All right, let's go. I, I guess you just wait a couple turns until they detach all of their materials. Making a Scarecrow. Link monsters will be unaffected from the Baguska. Otherwise, every non-Link will be forced into defense and be negated. Verte outs Baguska. How? Do you turn it into dark and then super poly into it? Is that the play? Right? Okay, then uh, you're right. Yeah, Verte is an out. Ghost Ogre is actually a great out to the Scarecrow. 
it must summon the monster to where the arrow is pointing to, and it cannot do so if it's off the field. It's essentially a negate without negating. The ogre also could be used against Wakashi or used against the Benki. Ogre is pretty good too, in addition to Droll. Maxi and Droll, then Ghost Ogre if you want to keep on hitting the Super Heavy Samurai deck. Now we got Baguska in attack position, making it absolutely untargetable. We're equipping the Soul Horns to special summon the Soul Horns to so then make a Ballista. Let's speed this up. Oh my. It is day one of Super Heavy Samurai, and we're about to see this a lot. We are Pendulum Shokaning into an Axis Code Talker, just like that. Boosting up to 4,300. We're going to Branded Opening, Special Summon from the deck by discarding a card, being met with a Max C. Alrighty. Did we Baron 4 pop yet? We had already destroyed a card in the field. Grabbing a Branded Fusion for the next turn here, but will there be a next turn? Taking out the Albu the Alibur, and just like that, with over 9,000 damage on the field, that is a 2-1 victory. Super Heavy Samurai taking out Branded Despia from the tournament. Surely there's going to be more Branded Despia and Super Heavy Samurai within the tournament, but just one of those players are now out. Damn. Very well done from both players, and I, I mean, Branded Dio was ready. Branded Dio had Ghost Ogre, Branded Dio had Droll, it wasn't enough. Reinforce for Rhymeheart. Generally, you don't want to imperm this because the Rhymeheart could chain destroy it, summoning itself onto the field. We got the Arrival here. Multiple copies of Arrival can all be activated in the same turn to Reborn from the Graveyard. Negate anything. Negate or destroy a monster. The opponent does not have a banished card, so it's only destroy a monster. We have negate, negate, negate a monster, and then we have negate anything as a counter trap. So if you were to have a Baron to Floor of your own and they activate Reframing, you can't negate the Reframing, but you could negate a Baron to Floor negating. Let's go. That is a ton of disruption. Three, four, five, six. Six disruptions plus Maxime. Grabbing our Fenrir, we're gonna max C preemptively. Special summoning that Fenrir to battle we go. Big enough to take out the Apollo Say, wiping out three monster negates just like that. We are going to destroy the Fenrir with the Dispater, and now we only have two disruption. We only have Baron and Reframing to negate and destroy anything. Two negates. When and how do we use it? We have the Arrival being added to the hand, which could Reborn from the Graveyard. Lightheart searching for the Scareclaw Field spell. We are under Max C, so we gotta be careful here. It's also main phase two, so there's no way to really win this turn. Negate and destroy the Field spell. Now, you can only activate one Field spell. If we had another Field spell, we could activate it still this turn. So if we have a way to summon Lightheart again in the extra monster zone, we will be able to activate the Field spell. Goodbye, we still have the reframing. One negate left grief to summon the Rhino Heart to then send the Rhino Heart to trigger the Rhino Heart to summon itself onto the field. We're just gonna negate. Get that out of here. We do not want the Rhino Heart to send a tier limit from the deck to the graveyard to then perform a fusion summon with. Scream with the tier limit cash Tira. That's mill six. Very likely going to accomplish what the Rhino Heart would have done. Mill six has to do something. Yes. Double fusion. We, <laughs> wow, we have it all. I think we're making a Kaleido Heart here along the Kick Kalos, right? We are going to Kick Kalos, add the Sharon. So we didn't trigger both fusions here. Kick Kalos sent itself to the graveyard to reborn the Rhino. Rhino could send any tier limit card from the deck to the graveyard. We are, it's going to be a monster that is. Are we making Rukalos or Kaleido? Sending Hobness, the ceiling for tier limit is only two fusion summons. They cannot do three like they could do in TCG. So you're trading Kit Kalos for three fusions, or you get Kit Kalos, but you can only do two fusions. So which one's better? Terrellman is actually a lot better in TCG without the Kit Kalos. Sharon and Rhino are going to be making a Time Thief Redoer, which could trigger the Sharon by sending it to the Graveyard by card effect. And this is it. Ooh, did we just draw into that Biss deal? How long did we have that Biss deal? Oh, uh, off of uh, there. <laughs> the Bistil was there to stop the second and final fusion summon. 
again, we're in main phase two, so <laughs> I, I, I feel like we have already lost this duel, but we're gonna keep on cooking. Why not? It is an underworld goddess, which will perma negate the field, actually. Dispater will not be able to special summon a banished monster, it then cannot negate, Baron Floor cannot pop a card, and the Druid Swarm is gonna send the goddess, but it still gets to negate, at least. Not that that's really gonna help us too much here. Astralad on summon will be able to pop one of the monsters. Okay. And uh, Sullyx not gonna even be activated. Yeah, let's just get out of here. Let's go to game two. That's a lot of cards. <laughs> Surely, even Droplet giving even more value to a giant hand. Get Hero Living into the Prisma, sending from the extra deck the Astra Loud, or I, I mean, revealing it to then send a Vsauce to become Vsauce. There you go, it is a starter. A Hero Lives stopped being used once Amatira and Trisocta were introduced in the TCG, so it's quite interesting to see it still being used. And how do you have room for it? Your Tier Limit, Monodium, Scareclaw, and Hero Lives with the Prisma? That's kind of nuts. Chaos Angel is here, and it was used with a light and dark, so it's unaffected from all monster effects, but they have a droplet. Astro Loud is being so, whoa, we got rid of the Chaos Angel. What are we doing? Curious, send any card from the deck to the graveyard? Huh, send Snow, then mill three. Milling Havnis and Rhino Heart, why not? And Scream, <laughs> okay. Uh, the Rhino Heart we are not triggering. We did not activate that yet. We're gonna add a Crime, which will be able to negate anything. Havnas fusion summoning into the Kid Kalos. Now, again, Tier Limit can only fuse two times. We're gonna add a Sullyak here, replace the field spell with our Tier Limit field spell to grab the Tier Limit Cash Tira, which replaces the Merly. So we're gonna send ourselves to the Graveyard to mill five, mill three. Uh, Jen, don't we send it to the Graveyard to mill two and then mill eight? So we missed out on mill two, right? What's the, well, we added it. Okay, we added it with the field spell. We didn't add it with the Kid Kalos. So that would be the difference here. Mill eight. And what are we triggering? We got Meta Noise. We have Sharon. Make sure we activate the correct Sharon and target the correct one with the Meta Noise, not the one that we were trying to fuse with. Heartbeat also recycling the meta. This is insane disruption. Negate, negate, flip face down, mate, infusion summon. We also have negate special summoning. I don't think the droplet is enough to stop this turn one. Even at fairy tale snow. Unfreaking believable. Uh, banishing our limited to one foolish burial of goods. We are now going to be sending the tier limit cash tier and snow for a barricade blocker. What the block? Discarding the tri the Trivakarma? Trivakarma is gonna be searching for a reframing? No, a uh, scream, okay. Do we even play reframing in this deck? I'm not sure. We are then going to be making an Apollo USA triple monster negate, triggering the scream to mill an additional three. Let's dissect what we accomplished here. Negate anything, and it will trigger a fusion. Negate a monster in the field. Flip a monster on the field and then trigger a fusion, which could go into a, let's say, a Kaleido Heart to spin a card back on the field. We have negate, 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 and negate. Is that seven disruption? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, because snow. Nine disruptions? Huh? And uh, 10 if you count the field spell? 10. Okay, uh, can we play through 10? We're gonna be grabbing the Rhyme Heart. Uh, Rhyme Heart will be triggering the Scream, not going into a Fusion Summon here. About 10 disruptions. We'll count up the disruptions and when they're being used. Crime negates. So we have nine disruptions left. Discarding the Sharon to trigger a Fusion, which could go into a Drago Stepelia, right? No, we're going into the Kaleido Heart right here. So this is gonna be one of our disruptions, unless we don't activate the spin and we wait to spin. Are we waiting to spin? We're waiting. So uh, we still have the nine disruption. <laughs> All right, back to us. Forbidden Droplet will surely keep us alive, right? Sending Star Frost Field Spell just to, to reduce the, uh, oh, okay, we're reducing the Goddess and the Kaleido here. Taking that 3,500, it is protecting us from lethal. Wait, we forgot about Fairy Tale Snow? Uh-oh. And that is the final lethal amount for game. Let's go to game three. Very powerful. Oh my. Max Ash Ash. Havnis. Huh. 
Avnis, known for winning on turn zero during the opponent's turn. Maxi now to the imaginings. Reveal a Monadium or a Vsauce to draw to, then return a card back in the deck. We could have used that called by earlier. And that's why we maxied early, so that they could not just draw into a called by. Damn. That's uh that's a problem. We don't really have good plays under Max C. We're super heavy samurai, and we saw Pendulum. Both of them can make Baguska. Rhino Hard sending Sharon to trigger our fusion summon, and we have zero disruption. Our hand is all gas, and we got Max Seed. <laughs> like, what? Oh no! This is the end! Reborn in the tier, let me cash tier after sending to the graveyard to mill two, so we're milling ten cards total here. Two, three, five, mill, 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 mill. Grief, Soliac, Scream is gonna be searching, Selic's gonna be grabbing a monster. Triva Karma could grab the tier limit field spell. It could grab any Vsauce, spell, or trap. There we go. We already have a Sharon in the hand, which is a card that we probably would be searching for. Scream grabbing the crime to negate anything if we somehow do not win on this turn. We gotta be careful about the Meek. We do not want to destroy it by battle or card effect because the field spell and the Meek will get two balls in the field. Not that it's gonna be doing anything great. It will just block us from lethaling. Lightheart into the Scareclaw field spell. Scareclaw field spell into the right card. Special summon to where the Lightheart is to then grab the arrival. Arrival, arrive our Vsauce back onto the field to then make our Baron to floor negate and pop. We can then banish for the Vicious Astroloud, pop in the Meek to trigger the Meek and field spell. Is this only when it's face up? When a card, if a card, oh, it has to be face up. Interesting. Why do they add all these weird restrictions to Monodium? Didn't even trigger. Damn, pop face down. If we destroyed it by battle, it would have then triggered to reborn. Sharon, discard Havnis, mill three, trigger the Havnis to fusion summon. Again, there is zero disruption here. To game we go over 12,000 damage. Tier Lament, Monodium, defeating Monodium. And would you believe me if I told you that Monodium, Super Heavy Samurai together as one deck is also a viable way to play? I don't even play Papa Roach on stream. I don't know why it was them. I, I told her this before the stream started. <laughs> Chandelier discarding Ash, setting up the big welcome Labyrinth. Labyrinth did not receive any new support, but they have been updating their deck with Droll and Lockbird. Max C in the draw phase, cross out, designate, negate the C, chain our C so our C does not get negated by the cross out, designate, activate big welcome before the Max C is resolved so you do not get to draw a card on our special summon. Summon lady, return lady, then lady could special summon, but then we're gonna draw a card because of our Max C. Okay. Very interesting way to do that because Max C is not so good on the Labyrinth player's turn anyway, so you may as well chain your max seed to your own called by or your cross out sending the retribution from the deck to the graver to then draw a card retribution can recycle any branded spell or trap of the grave to the hand so if we have a way to get branded fusion into the graveyard or the activation of it gets negated we then get to add it back to the hand to activate it again adding a quem before the drone lock bird is resolved so we cannot add any more cards in the deck to the hand ash not being used for branded fusion negating a fusion deployment as we are saying that this is a more simplified game state where it's okay to do that, but didn't we know Quem was added to the hand? And don't we know Quem could send Branded Fusion with the Retribution to add it to the hand, then activate it? Like this is public, Not this is not a surprise. It's not like, whoa, I didn't know you had that. Public knowledge. Lost can't add, but it still protects because we are under the Droll. Droll stops you from adding from the deck, not from the grave. And let's get branded fusioning. Let's go, let's go. Albion Sanctify your play. Okay. Quem is going to be triggered to reborn the Cartesia because the card was moved from the extra deck. We're going to fusion summon into our Gangrenol. Gangrenol will send a card to the graveyard that will possibly be triggering. That will be the Albion to trigger during the end phase to set, not add, because we can't. Sanctifier can... Uh, couldn't we Cartesia back to the hand, then summon Albion during the opponent's turn to then fuse with their field? Yes, we can. Banishment could reborn Quem. Oh yeah, we are in trouble even without the puppet. No puppet, we don't need it. Sanctifier early. 
Are we fusing with Quem into a Mirror Jade? It looks like it. And the Branded Loss will give us a Mercurier to negate, let's say you wanted to summon an Ariana. This is why we would do this early. Get Fusion Summoning. It's really unfortunate that Imperm could actually not negate this. Yeah, you can't do it. The Lost is protecting it. So let's get Lost in. And uh, we should put this on Chainlink 1. Not that it's probably going to matter, but you still want to not give them the opportunity to activate their impermanence. Come forth, Mirror Jade, with a non-target monster banish. And there is our monster negate, which will not stop the Lava Golem from tributing two cards on the field. We're going to negate. Does this even trigger off of the Lava Golem? I don't think so. It states that if a monster is special summoned by your opponent's activated monster effect, this is not activated. So uh, I guess we just wanted to do it for the Lady Labyrinth. Okay. This is when it would be triggered. Discard Chandelier, Mercurier, Negate, because we control the Albion. Albion's allowing us to Mercurier. Again, public knowledge. We knew that card was there. We're going to Big Welcome spin any card in the field back. So we could have Big Welcome spun back the Albion, then activated the Stovey slash Chandelier so that it would not be negated by the public knowledge Mercurier. We have Chandelier being triggered, Torby summoning onto the field, which could turn into a Chaos Angel to banish any card in the field. We saw Banishment to reborn a card from the Graver, then fuse with either side of the field. When do we do it? We could reborn the Mirror Jade, then get Banishing. Okay, Chaos Angel is going to force the activation of the Banishment. Activate Banishment, Mirror Jade. And then we could make a Dragostepelia with the Chaos Angel, plus have a non-target monster banish with the Mirror Jade. Beautiful. Brain of Despia is just nuts. Nut, nut, nuts. Because we're under maxi, we did not want to further fusion summon. And uh, Chaos Angel is affected by the Mirror Jade because we didn't use a light monster. Sending a Titan Clad, which could add our special summon during the end phase. Lava Golem, which uh, we returned back to the hand, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, we Lava Golem, then returned it back. Very well done. Keep on adding. It, we gave them a lot of cards through maxi, then ended up playing through most of it. Very interesting. Big welcome. We'll summon a lady, then add the lady back, trigger in the Stovian Chandelier. We could pop a card on the field. All right, let's see what we can do. Branded in red. Ooh, this is something. We could brand it in red on chain link one to ensure that the branded loss will protect the Chimera popping cards on the fields. You now can't respond to this. You now lose your whole field and you can't chain. <laughs> I mean, again, public knowledge like this is not private i don't i guess we had to change the brand in red holy moly we can't chain no chain goodbye fields no dogmatica punishment no big welcome it's all gone now chimera can't attack directly so we're gonna have to find lethal through the mirror jade being reborn with quem mirror jade was reborn with the banishment reborn with quem continually reborn from the graveyard Let's hop into game number two. Limited to one, pot of E, don't mind if I do, come to me. I like to check if we lost any of our Chaos Angels, which of course we didn't. And we only play one Chaos Angel and we didn't banish it. Wow. Setting up the Labyrinth Labyrinth so we have non-target destruction with our welcome or big welcome trap. Using the big welcome to turn it set because of the Ku Clock, we're going to be chaining our Max C. So we got to make sure we don't special too many times here. So the lovely allows you to draw, then lovely will pop a card in the hand. So it kind of goes even with the maxi. Randomly taking out what? What are we taking out? Serenir banishing the chandelier before it's added from the graveyard back to the hand. And the lovely will also recycle the big welcome in the grave to be replayed again. Goodbye, Nadir Servant. A pretty damn good card to be wiping out of their hand here. We also have that Labyrinth Labyrinth ready to get pop in. We have it all. We have lots of plays. We could uh, potentially set up an Eradicator to wipe out all spells from their hand. This is going to be crazy. Welcome into Lady, not popping with a field spell. Big Welcome needs to be chained with the Lady. Now, if you had Ash, you can't use Ash because the Lovely was protecting you from Ash, but we have Super Poly to chain link block the Lady, stopping them from setting up an Eradicator, which would wipe out the Branded Fusion. But if we could get the Serenir into the Graveyard to get the Retribution into the Graveyard from the deck to then add the Branded Fusion back to the hand, the Eradicator doesn't even beat Branded Fusion here. Or Fusion. 
into goodbye lovely goodbye lady shokan into garura which deals double battle damage lovely being reborn with the big welcome returning back to ariana popping the sarah near as the lovely then could randomly pop the branded fusion but because it's on a higher chain link we could see it get popped and then i mean whatever gets popped here we're just going to send retribution and add it back chandelier being triggered to add back to our hand here and let's see what we do what we doing uh, this nothing's going to get disrupted here do we want to just add that back yeah we probably do that's exactly what we want to do whether it was fusion or lost come back to me and now we're going to have a big play branded fusion we're going to search with the lost fusion shokan it's the albion we still have our normal summon if we want to let's say search a quem then normal the quem so many options any albaz monster so many of them we have the albion shrouded dragon which could send from the deck to the graveyard and then draw a card we are fusing into the lubellion we're going to discard the albion instead so we do not get that free draw fusion shokan into our mirror jade mirror jade with a non-target monster banish the albion can attack i mean this is game 3k from garura lethal with the rest the clock is sending itself from the hands of the graveyard we're also chaining chandelier Ooh, clock will be summoned to block the attack for game uh oh but then we have mirror jade what hey whoa 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 and then we have the trap activatable white okay all right it happens you know sometimes you got the sneezies and you sneeze on your field and it's all gone game three rp feather duster against labyrinth did you side that in alibur into the branded fusion drone lockbird's not that good against branded despia we're gonna be sending a lubellion and albaz how do you know when to do this if you have another dark monster to fuse with the albion effect that's when you send Albaz and Lubellion, so the Albaz could fuse with the other dark monster. That's just kind of the flow chart reasoning of what you do and why you do that. As I said, the other dark monster making the Lubellion discard fuse into the Mirror Jade. And because we have Lubellion, that could trigger the Albion to set up a card during the end phase. Again, playing around Droll. Droll did not happen. We do not care. You know, we can't Nadir Servant, but we still don't care setting up branded loss which will trigger during the opponent's turn setting up the banishment and now we're going to be setting up a big welcome which could turn into turn to disruption here huh we are mirror jading okay we're we're quemming quem is here so what i'm thinking is we want to get mirror jade into the graveyard then reborn it with quem so it will be able to activate to banish a monster on the field next turn quem send quem okay not cartesia Oh, thank you. We're going to just reborn it with the banishment and activate to wipe out your field during the end phase. Welcome, Labyrinth. Retribution? Isn't that returning? Oh, your Mirror Jade's still in the grave. Returning Titan clad and Albion back into the extra deck to negate the Welcome Labyrinth. And we still have banishment to reborn the Mirror Jade. Not that you even gave me a reason to use it. We're just going to have it on the field. Very well done. And yes, the Retribution will be live in the graveyard now. Now that it's in the grave, it can recycle the Branded Fusion. I feel like every Branded Fusion game is a little bit different than the last one. That's why I love it. Maxi, in response to the Foolish Barrel, sending the Tragedy by card effect, we could use its trigger to search for the Alibur. Otherwise, you don't trigger, then you could recycle the Branded Fusion had we not had the Retribution to recycle it. Branded Lost with the Branded Fusion will make it so you cannot activate anything in response to our Fusion Summons, and we search our deck for an Albaz Monster, which we have an active normal summon for. It could be a Mercurior, it could be a Quem, it could be an Albion Shrouded Dragon, it could be a Cartesia. So many things we could do here. Using into the Bora Load Furious. Branded Lost come to us, Mercurior, with our Monster Negate. We're going to Harpy Feather Duster wipe up that welcome labyrinth as we have 9,000 damage on the field with an activatable bore load and mirror jade to banish whatever is summoned wipe it up we have the big welcome which cannot be used on the opponent's monsters unless we summon our lady labyrinth 
So by Ash negating the Alibur, I think we hold on to Mercoyer for the lady to ensure that the big welcome will not be spinning our own card back. We uh, just very simply win. Furious pop Alibur and the Ariana. Mercoyer negate the lady, as we said, to stop the big welcome. And just like that, we have a 2-1 victory. Pepe's Areola with the Lava Golem plays, returning it back to the hand with the Big Welcome Labyrinth. I very much enjoyed watching that match. Thank you to both of you. Let's hop into another match. Oh, damn. Isn't like uh, Taya, right? What the heck? Like search Taya, banish uh, Grandmaster at least? Huh? I, like this is something. Harpy Feather Duster, wiping up the back row. Uh, the name's Taya, right? I'm not good with names. Sword Soul Taya. Taya Sword Soul. Yeah, it is Taya. Taya Banish. Huh. Maxi before the preemptive special summon, but we didn't do it in the draw phase, so the triple tactics talent is going to be drawing, but we are also ashed, to be fair. Now reframing, dead. No good. We have Droll, Ash, Imperm. Those are our disruptions. You know, uh, I don't know. I'm just going to look at your extra deck. What's going on? Do we have the level 7 synchro? Yeah. So Yazi could be pretty cool here. Uh, emergence, grab the Taya, banish Emergence, become level 7, Taya untargetable from the Impermanence unless they would use it on the Taya, probably they would. It's just, why are we acting like this is not activatable? It's not the greatest. I guess you could make an argument that you're saving it for a more influential play because you had a lot of hand traps that could keep them at bay until this has a bigger impact or I guess your opponent has no idea what you're playing now right? Yuri's going into game two having no idea is that a valid strategy to keep it a secret? here we go, uh, this is what we wanted we wanted a worm or sword soul alongside our emergence, then we would go in Maxi with no way to stop it, I believe we still commit into the grandmaster here but not Long Yun. Long Yun is draw three under max C. No way we would do that. Grandmaster with our Monster Negate. I think we search for Blackout End. We do get to draw for the Mo Yi, Chain Link Block in the Ash. Imperm Negate. So we could maybe randomly draw into some disruption. Do we search for Protos, Banish Max C, Mo Yi, and uh, Ash Negate? I don't think so. We do have Maxi and Valor. They don't have a way to stop our Maxi. So it's looking good for us, actually. Dead Arrival. Nothing to Reborn from the Graveyard. <laughs> Dead Hand. All Hand Traps and Techs and Extension where we have nothing to extend with. We could not capitalize on them bricking, so we just swung in for 28. We do have an active Monster Negate. We can negate. They could then link off. They could then Reborn with the Arrival. So this is actually, you know, Ash is going to be helpful here. Do we Ash negate the field spell or the light heart? Wait, oh, well, because of Maxi, we didn't want to further cook. Damn, just Maxi, Maxi, Maxi. Didn't even Ash your Maxi. I don't care because we're just going to win this turn. Wipe out dark, lethal damage. <laughs> Game number three. That was a boomer Yu-Gi-Oh duel, huh? Very nice. Okay. All right. What do we have here? We just have Ash. When do we Ash when they have full gas? Negating Rhymeheart from searching for any Monadium card. And if you were to negate the field spell, they could have Gammud. So waiting on that negate was in a way good. This is Chainlink blocking Ash from the Meek summoning from the deck here. So you would not even be able to Ash here. We're summoning two balls. Ball gets popped, the field spell reborn, and summoned from the deck. Starfrost into the Light Heart. I do not like ashing this. Ashing the field spell could be okay here. As we now get searching for the Rhyme Heart, Reich Heart that is. Reich Heart behind the Light Heart, making sure that you have room to summon it. 
into the Stardust Excel, which will be making a Dispater because it is our non-tuner dragon. Dispater will be reborning a banished monster. First, we're gonna make the cross sheep and making room for one of its arrows so that we could summon a Vicious Astraloud by banishing the Vsauce and the Reichheart or a Rhymeheart. That's gonna trigger the cross sheep to reborn the Meek to then make a level 10 Synchro into the Baron de Floor Omni Negate. We have about two disruptions here. Reborning the Vsauce onto the field, reborning the Lightheart because we have a Vsauce on the field. Now making Elf. Elf can reborn a level two from the graveyard. Arrival will be arriving our right card. This is a level 10 Synchro into Chaos Angel, which it's gonna give us the battle destruction protection and our Synchros are unaffected from monster effects. IP Mascarina, ready to link off during the opponent's turn. Can't affect them by monster effects. Can't destroy Mascarina by battle. So entering battle does not force her to activate. We have an Omni Negate with Baron de Floor. We have just destroy a monster with the Dispater. And then whatever we link off into it, Mascarina, we have about triple disruption publicly with the private droll. Shoot a special summon. Can't spin back the synchros. We could force the Mascarina. Yeah. No, we can't because it can't be. <laughs> can't target. Unaffected. I'm out. And I'm actually out of the entire tournament. Goodbye. Starting off with the Wakashi. This is generally, I would say, a bad idea because I think every Super Heavy Samurai player is playing two Gamma. And this is when they would just Gamma negate and then you would scoop. You're done. It's high risk and uh, kind of low reward. I mean, you know, it's one more draw because they're going to be special summoning a ton anyway. Well, you know, to be fair, they could just go into Baguska and you would only draw one, but Ash negate anyway. We have no disruption. This is one card Wakashi, no disruption. So take notes. This is it. Full power, full throttle, all the way. This is it. We are discarding with the effect of the Scarecrow to reborn to where it's pointing to. We are going into our Baron to Floor or Omega. We're not doing Omega, are we? We're going to start ripping cards out of the hand. I would love to see it. Not sure what version of this is of Super Heavy Samurai. It could be the Scythe version or Dispater. Maybe it could even go into something like a... Oh, okay, we're making the Baron to Floor unaffected here. This is interesting. It's not really adding because it's just unaffected for this turn. Maybe a Roar Dawn is a play we could be doing. Peacemaker onto the Scarecrow, summoning from the deck of Scales. Scales reborn from the graveyard here. This is when we Link Summon. Ballista. Ballista is another thing that not everyone's going to be playing with the deck, but so far we're seeing it the most. Piercer gets searching for the Stealthy, which is a free special summon. Ballista into the box. Box into the Tunneler. Tunneler's going to draw two cards. Clifford Genius. We got our Pendulum Summon because we synchroed with the Wakashi to put it back into the Pendulum Scale. Summon, Summon, Summon. It could be any monster to where the Clifford is pointing to. Wagon is going to be activating, grabbing a booster, which is a free level four monster onto the field. And now we're making an Apollo USA. Triple monster negate. Booster special summon. Therion will be another Omni negate. And we have Dweller. Okay. No scythe lock. We're going to have draw two. Maybe draw into more hand traps. In addition to the draw and lock where we have, we get also have a follow up of the Baron to Floor pops the Soul Piercer. Didn't draw into hand traps. We didn't pop the Soul Piercer. We could turn off the graveyard. We could Ani negate. We could Apollo say negate, negate, negate. We have the Therion Regulus negate. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six disruptions. Are you ready? Are we going to game with Gold Pride? No, we are not. Our Maxi got negated. The only thing keeping Super Heavy Samurai in check alongside Droll and Lockbird. Let's go. Hey, our semi limited teleport is here. Chain teleport some from the deck. Do gold prides activate in the graveyard? The deer note does. Deer note activates, so that kind of messes things up a little bit. Punk semen is going to be freely negated by the Apollo. We have more negates where that came from. We have four more disruption, not even counting the drone lockbird. 
Chirakusai attempt an infusion summon. We have three more disruptions as it gets negated. And we're still not big enough to swing over the Apollo. Or yes, we are. It is at 800. Correction. Three more disruptions. As you now make the Chariot carry. 1900 attack. To battle we go. Taking out the Apollo, you say goodbye to one more disruption. We got Zeus. But uh, it's not enough. There's two negates for four material Zeus. We almost won. We almost broke the field. I mean, we weren't close to winning, actually. But we almost wiped up a full power Super Heavy Samurai turn. Hold up! We have called by! And then uh, Baron of Florida, we, we are wiping the field. We are full wiping. Okay, Baron negate and then called by. Yep, 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 yep. Called by, called by, called by, called by, called by! What are you doing? Huh? Okay, it's fine. Uh, we... This close. We are so close. So close. <laughs> e even with the Baron, the, sh the Zeus would still wipe the field. It, um... All right. We're, hey, we're still kind of cooking here. We, we're not done. We're not done. We are still starting your engines. We weren't going to add any more cards anyway, Bozo. So get ready for your summon, and then we are going to start our engines and get gold pride in like crazy. Baron to four, get popping. Okay, we don't... Well, we could just start Leon. That's it? Uh, that's not that good. We can't even ball. There's no baller play. Leon, Leon, Leon. Into pop a card in the field. That's pretty much it. Leon Reborn, and then Synchro into the Star Leon, which you better be playing. Yep, okay, Star Leon is here. Some people are saying to not play this. It, it's main phase only. Never mind, I guess we didn't do anything. Okay, that, yeah, that's that. I guess we're thinking, they were trying to bait our activation, and we were saying, you're not baiting my activation. I'm making you lose your battle phase. So you're committing to the battle phase. I allow it. I think it was correct. It was correct. Baron to floor, triggering the uh, start your engine, but the Therion could then negate us doing that. So we don't actually get to do anything. And then we're done. That's, that's it. That is gold pride. I think it put up a really good show. That was pretty good. Yeah, I think so. We uh, didn't see any boss monsters, though. No attempt to star Leon. No Prince Baller. Okay. Droll and Lockbird, no more adding for you. We're going to Scarecrow. We could still discard a card, reborn a card to where it's pointing to, making sure that the priority with your summons are going to be in... So let's say if you're facing you, uh, Monster Zone 2... Four and five is where you'd want to summon your monsters because the Scarecrow needs to be reborning a monster in monster zones one and three. Borrowed Savage Dragon, nice to see you here. We have our Omni Negate, whatever we top deck, it will be negated. Dear No cannot even be activated as we scoop it up, taking this into game number two. Gold Pride going first, and it better set up something great. Let's see it. Punk Seaman into Droll. Is that the end of our turn? Foxy Tune is going to be special summoning from the deck. Our Sherakusai to fuse into our Rising Carp, which could summon two bodies from the deck. Can't search Field Spell. Can't search for Start Your Engine. A, a lot of plays have been disrupted here, but we're still cooking. We also can't search with the Jam Dragon. We have the Deer Note Reborning from the Graveyard, which could synchro during the opponent's turn to spin multiple cards in the field back to the hand. That is something. We... While we can't add, we could still mill. All right. So we have spin one, two, three cards on the field back to the hand and Imperm plus Nibiru. And I mean, we got a lot of protection. We could do things. And the Gamma's not gonna be live unless we go into the Lambda. Triggering the Piercer, grabbing the Bakashi, hit him with the Droll. We are waiting to go into the Amazing Dragon to spin back to the hand. Regulus is going to be able to negate. So what you kind of have to do is you have to imperm Regulus, let it resolve, then you could share a Kusai while it's negated to spin the field back. 
We are equipping the Piercer. If sent from the field to the grave, it will be searching again. We have Wakashi on the field. We also have Booster to summon itself onto the field. Nibiru right here and now. Because we didn't preempt the, preempt the impermanence, we actually can't negate this from negating our Nibiru. But we could now use Amazing Dragon before the Excel Stardust Dragon is used, but there's no level two tuner in the grave to even use it with anyway. We did not use Scarecrow to discard the Gamma so that we could do the Excel Stardust Dragon play, but we haven't even used its effect yet. But it's now time to get spinning. Amazing Dragon spin everything back. All monsters back to the hand, back to the extra deck, the Scarecrow before it even activated. Goodbye to Booster, goodbye to Wakashi. We could still Pendulum Summon though, but uh, no real Pendulum Summon play. Very well done. Gold Pride has successfully disrupted Super Heavy Samurai. We have the better luck next time grabbing the Leon. Amazing Dragon reborning the Rising Carp. Leon is going to special summon. Cyframe Gear Gamma will be negating and destroying. And we, if we can get the Rising Carp into the graveyard, it could give us the ability to double attack here. We're just ending the turn. Right back to you. Sure. Tribute this, summon two punks with different names from the deck. Maybe we ran out of punks to summon. It has to be fusion summoned. Okay, so it can't even activate. It was, it's just on the field. If reborn from the graveyard, it cannot summon two from the grave. Scales if summoned, reborn a piercer from the graveyard. Show Khan into the Ballista, triggering the effect to grab an ancient gear box and the piercer will be searching for a super heavy. We're going to negate the search for the box, which also stops the box from searching for another monster. Very well done. And you know, that's the thing about Super Heavy, even if you disrupt them, you always have to worry about the Pendulum Summon follow-up. Grabbing Wakashi, we have Wakashi being Pendulum Summoned here. Locking us in a Super Heavy Samurai Monster plays only. When you discard with Wakashi, it's a last resort play. Super Heavy Sam only. Into Saratobi. 2800 it can attack with, and it can pop a back row card. We're popping the better luck next time. Get burning and big enough to take out the Rising Carp, but not the Amazing Dragon. We have the Stealthy Samurai, which is, uh, I knew it did that. You have no spell trap cards in your graveyard, so you can steal your opponent's trap in their grave. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Thank you for your impermanence. That's a fun play. Amazing Dragon reborning the Seaman from the graveyard, which will be negated with the stolen impermanence. Negate. Now we have to take out the Saratobi before setting our start your engines. The jam drive is also, it has this hidden crazy effect. If your opponent chains to the activation of your punk, you then get to special summon the jam drive onto the field. Jam drive is gonna be searching for a punk seam. Oh my gosh. I don't know if this is really gold pride winning. It's, it's punk, right? Like punk. I mean, gold pride is clapping. Let's go. Psychic and Punisher, buh. Boost up our attack, lethal damage. Wow, Gold Pride is amazing. Get your Gold Pride today. Let's go to game three. Maxi in the draw. Ash is going to be negating. Not respecting Gamma whatsoever. The disrespect, even seeing Gamma in previous duels, we still don't care. You have to play around in permanence, which we can. Surely, no. Uh, we, I don't think we, we have enough. We're going to be adding the Soul Piercer. When should we imperm? Do we imperm the Scarecrow discarding to Reborn from the Graveyard? That is going to not be when we imperm. As we then show Khan into the Excel Stardust Dragon, this is gonna be a Baron to Floor if we don't imperm right here. We could just save the impermanence for next turn and then try to imperm the Baron to Floor. Okay, we're trying to stop the Baron to Floor instead of negate the Baron to Floor during the next turn. Peacemaker onto the Scarecrow, tributing to someone from the deck Scale. Scale's reborn from the graveyard. We could link summon this off into the Ballista. Ballista add the box, box add the Tunneler. Pendulum summon with what we should have it would be a Clifford. So if we can get the Clifford onto the field. No, we're not getting Clifford onto the field. We're going to Pendulum summon Shokan into the Baron to Floor anyway. This is why holding on to Imperm may have just been better. Just hold the Imperm for the next turn. Poly USA is going to be a triple monster negate on top of the Omni negate. So we have four public disruptions here into Dweller. Dweller could stop Deer Note. 
All right, and we're gonna draw two, maybe drawing into more hand traps. We have Crow, we have Droll, uh, Maxi, Maxi, Ash. Ash has been drawn. Four public disruptions here. What can we do? Emergency teleport being negated by the Ash, called by will negate the negates. And Baron to floor, would you like to say something? Yes, I would. I would like to negate the negate negating as the Dweller then detaches to stop us from activating cards in the graveyard. And just like that, you will not be fingering my Ash. So we just have triple Monster Negate with the Apollo USA for public disruption. Ogre Search, do we droll? No, we just negate with Apollo USA. Two more negates. Wagon could search Field Spell and, you know, let's just surrender. We're out. So good job, Leto Avalon. Thank you for getting top 16 with Gold Pride. Mostly Gold Pride, a little bit of Punk. I'm excited to see your deck list. I will be copying it. Thank you very much. Let's go. That is the end of the top 16. YouTube, I appreciate you very much. Make sure you watch the top eight and grand finale plus top deck list. You do not want to miss out on Dinos versus Monadium. Thank you very much. Let's go.